Hi friends, uh, immigration attorney Marina Chapelsky here. Uh, today I want to talk about the first 100 days of President Joe Biden's presidency. Uh, everyone is talking about it. Everyone is thinking about the promises he made, especially with immigration and what's been happening with those, how things have been accomplished of the list of things he promised when he was being elected in 2020. But before I start talking about the news and what's going on with President Biden's 100 days in presidency and how it's changed our immigration system, I ask you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the little bell below. We are trying really, really hard to grow our YouTube channel. That's why I'm recording a lot of these videos now to help you guys get all the most recent information about immigration news, how to guides, step-by-step -step guides, and explaining the most complicated immigration processes in very simple words. So people not, I'm not a big fan of politics. I think it's a dirty, dirty business, but doing what I do, I have to stay on top of the news and especially of immigration news. Trump's presidency was wrought with all kinds of terrible news about the uh, restrictions that President Trump has created on legal immigration to the United States. And when the pandemic hit, it just kept getting worse and worse and worse pretty much daily. It started, of course, with a public charge rule that threw everybody into a havoc. Nobody knew what to do with this uh, new public charge rule. People uh, didn't know how to fill out those new forms. They didn't know how to give the evidence that was required for the new forms. It was a disaster. And that had to do, of course, with green card and immigrant visa applications. So the public charge rule applied to everything like that. Plus, there's a lot of requirements of insurance for even people coming here with like tourist visas and other kind of non-immigrant visas. So Trump was terrible for immigration. I was very happy that President Biden got elected because he promised to make immigration better. And my people are immigration people, of course. So uh, today I want to discuss what's been happening since he took office in January of 2020 and the promises that he made and what's happened to those. So of course, number one on the list, and I have notes here that I'm gonna go over, of course, but number one on the list was everybody's talking about the amnesty. So President Biden promised an amnesty, a wide, all-encompassing amnesty that would allow people who are still undocumented in America to legalize, to get some sort of work status and a green card at the end. And to this day, that has not happened. So that promise was only partially met. Uh, although a bill for immigration reform is in Congress right now, President Biden is waiting for Congress to take action on that bill. It's being worked on, and of course, if you know anything about politics, you know that a bill starts out one way, and if it does pass, it ends up looking completely different from when it started out. The law changes as it goes through Congress and people are negotiating a lot of give and take, and different groups have different interests, and people exchange favors for changes in the law. So we will see how the amnesty ends up coming out, but it has not come out yet. And my clients call every day and ask me when the amnesty is coming out, will it affect them? What if you're in court proceedings waiting for your asylum case to be heard by a judge? What if you have a VAWA case? What if you have a marriage based on uh, you know, being married to a green card holder or you're a citizen? Will this amnesty help me? What if I never filed for anything before? I don't know. That's the answer. Right now, we don't know, and we don't know when the amnesty will come out, when the law will come out, or if it's really going to be an amnesty. And I know it was number one thing that Biden promised, but up until now, it's only partial, uh, partially met. Not good enough. He did do some things as soon as he took office. He got rid of the public charge rule, and USCIS has now finally 
gotten rid of it permanently. Uh, applause, applause. So this, the law about affidavits of support and the documents that have to be provided for affidavits of support returned to the way it was before August, 2019. So the extra restrictions for the public charge rule have gone away. And I thank President Biden and his new administration for that. But uh, some things are only suspended and not completely done away with for now. So we'll stick around for that and see. But they did get rid of the crazy form I-944, the self-sufficiency declaration, that not even in my experience, immigration officers knew what to do with and how to satisfy. And people who are filing for their relatives abroad didn't know how to get IRS transcripts. People who are looking to get a green card, the beneficiaries, the applicants for a green card, couldn't figure out how to get their credit reports. It was insane and it's gone. With President Biden, thank God, the public charge rule with the self-sufficiency declaration form I-944 is gone. No more. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh uh, I'm going kind of backwards in time uh, by the list that our organization AILA provided for us to go over the changes under the Biden's administration in the last hundred days. Uh, he promised to revise deportation criteria. It's, it's, it's a work in progress. It started already, but it hasn't been done yet. Uh, so in March of 2021, USCIS got rid of the interim final rule further delaying until the end of this year the effective date of that last rule under trump that they did manage to come out called the final rule security bars and processing related to the pandemic and it had to do with asylum and withholding of removal applications and it's suspended until the end of the year we'll see what happens the biggest thing that people are disappointed with, upset with Biden about, and which of course I'm upset with, of course, is that he promised to inc increase the amount of refugees we would accept at the border for them. So the Trump administration had reduced that number from 125,000 to 15,000. You understand for a country of our size to only allow 15,000 refugees is very little. We are a country of millions and millions. So 15,000 is nothing. As happens with politicians, he promised to increase, but didn't come through. So when Biden had to deal with the border crisis that we're experiencing, all these people, as soon as he get, got elected, rushed the border, especially children. They're called unaccompanied minors. Parents dropping kids at the border and leaving them there because of the amounts of people who ran to the border and the amounts of people who were trying to get in and get refugee status, hoping that the refugee cap would increase and they would be legalized. There were so many people there that it became a real crisis and Congress has demanded the Republicans have pressured President Biden to deal with that problem. And the way he dealt with it, he kept the refugee cap low. So what Trump started with the refugees, Biden supported. And that's a really bad thing. And I want people to understand that when politicians promise things when they're getting elected, a lot of times it's just empty promises. It's BS. And don't be so quick to listen. However, Biden has made attempts and I see it. I see the attempts, but we're dealing with a big problem with this broken immigration system. So the refugee cap remains at 15,000. It's just not good. It's not good. It's not good. Um, okay, so then I go down in time in the 100 days under President Biden. And the next thing is I discussed already the public charge rule. Uh, then uh, there was a change uh, again done under Trump with new restrictions for the H1B, H1B1 visas and the prevailing wages and the Department of Labor made a final rule now delaying until middle of May, May 14, 2021, the effective date of the final rule on computation of prevailing wage levels, which was published in 
January of 21, but of course the rule was made before, right before Trump left. So for now it's delayed also, which is showing me that Trump um, made these rules and then when analyzing them, Biden kept some of these rules. And even though they're being like suspended and delayed, not everything is being deleted and thrown out that was so terrible under Trump, but they promised to, to get rid of. So not everything is being get rid of. TPS had some positive changes. TPS got extended for Venezuela until 2022. DACA is back. That was a major, major improvement from Trump's uh, administration. They brought back deferred action for childhood arrivals called DACA. And DACA is for kids who are brought here under the age of 16 and were here for a certain amount of time and uh, here in 2007 and so on and who are still under 31 uh, years of age as of right now so daca is back i just filed a couple of new daca applications for people last week so i'm really hopeful about daca and that was brought back citizenship naturalization process there was a change in february and in february uscis updated its guidance uh, in its policy manual about the educational requirements you have to have to become a U.S. citizen for naturalization. The update, which became effective in March, provided that USCIS will go back to the administering the 2008 civics test to applicants who filed for NATS naturalization before December of 2020 or who will file after March 1, 2021, which means they went back to the old 2008 version of the naturalization civics and history test. They did not accept the new test. There was going to be a new citizenship test, a harder one under Trump. But when Biden administration came in, they rejected it. So the citizenship te test remains in the old pre-2008 form. Nice, nice, nice. Then, of course, we'll move down the line to February again. And there's an ICE memorandum on removal and relief. And ICE, which is the Immigration Customs Enforcement, announced uh, a new process they created for ICE case review process. This was very good news. This means that they're now going to look over certain ICE cases and maybe for humanitarian reasons, close them out. And you know, uh, get more humane about who they're gonna remove and deport. Again, about some delays that they decided to do instead of completely getting rid of, there was a rule about modifying the registration requirement for petitioners uh, seeking to file cap subject H-1B petitions. It was supposed to have gone into effect in March. They basically delayed it until the end of the year without you know saying right or wrong about it they just said look we'll deal with this at the end of the year so i see a lot of things that started under trump not completely deleted or canceled but just kind of pushed back until the end of this year or next year to deal with later uh and then of course going back to right after biden took office right in the beginning and this is another very positive change that happened a lot of the executive orders under Trump were canceled. So he canceled some executive orders that had to do with not processing certain family petitions for legal immigration, family unification. He had directed government agencies to improve some processes uh, and to uh, somehow connect this all to climate change. A refugee, admissions even though he got rid of the executive order back in february he went back to 15,000 that trump had decreased to and for now for this fiscal year it looks like we're gonna stick to the 15,000 to deal with the crisis at the border some of the bans were partially lifted unlike travel for certain categories of people some were not some steps were taken to improve uh, the procedures for unifying families, separated migrant families, but not everything. Public charge rule was reversed, uh, but not completely canceled for certain things. 
uh, training and accountability they're working on to better train, to better prepare immigration officers. They are working on protecting immigrants who worked in the military, uh, who served in the military to improve their chances of getting citizenship and stop them from being deported. And the biggest issue for me is that the asylum system that is so overwhelmed and it's so delayed right now did not get any improvements, okay? That he promised when he was getting elected that the asylum system would get improved, that the long lines to see an officer for an asylum interview, to see a judge for your immigration case for asylum would get better, that the lines would be reduced, that the caseloads would be uh, decreased, that people would start to be interviewed and going through the system and hurry up, None of that I have seen in my practice so far, but of course we're in the pandemic. I'm hoping that when the pandemic ends, that will improve. But for now, honestly, I have not seen major changes with the asylum backlog, the asylum delayed, the asylum cases overwhelming our current immigration system. Now, about Biden's cabinet, the, the, what we've seen is it's very diverse as opposed to what Trump had. Uh, there's a lot more women uh, now. Uh, there's about 46 women in the cabinet as of right now and 50% in the nationwide federal government jobs. That's great. Race is also a lot more diverse, the racial makeup of the cabinet and the government employees. There's now an openly gay person, Pete uh, uh, Buttigieg, as the first openly gay cabinet secretary. Uh, we have a black defense secretary, Lloyd Austin. I'm reading off from my list I prepared for this. Uh, Debbie um, or Deb Holland is the first Native American interior secretary. And my favorite is Alejandro Mayorkas the head of the Department of Homeland Security that controls immigration and USCIS and ICE. He is a fa from a family of immigrants. He is a Cuban American. And again, his name is Alejandro Mayorkas. Cool. Cool, cool. Summarizing first 100 days of Biden's administration. Some things were done. Some things were not done. Some things he'll never do. Family separation at the U.S.-Mexico border is still continuing, even though he signed an executive order condemning this policy. Right now, there's a record high amount of minors, kids without parents at the border waiting to be seen and accepted. They will probably not be getting refugee status because the cap is so low and he kept it low. And, um, you know, we'll see how that develops. Um, interesting you know, thing here is that as part of a more humane policy, ICE and CBP were told last week to drop their terms illegal and alien and assimilation from documents, from official paperwork. And now they're supposed to call people undocumented or non-citizens or migrants. So that's a new policy and I like that. And I like the fact that people are going to start to use better words to describe immigrants and words matter. So there's new policy about using the right words, but the visa backlog is continuing. Processing times for every kind of immigration process is still very long. Like we do a lot of VAWAs. I have people waiting for VAWA approval now for three and four years sometimes, but not everyone. Some people got approved pretty fast and they got their paperwork in like a year or less. So it's not completely hopeless, but a lot of them processing times are very delayed. And the times they post on the website, you can go to uscis.gov and see the processing times. They have increased and I feel like they're now giving themselves more time than it actually takes. So that's the good news. And I'm a little bit hopeful that as this pandemic uh, lifts and things get better and better and more people get vaccinated, that the times will decrease. I expect more changes in the system as we go along, but the initial excitement uh, and hope that everything will now change 180 degrees from the Trump's administration, I no longer have. I see the challenges that the Biden administration is facing. I see that they're trying, but in a lot of instances, they're sticking with what Trump 
did at the end of his uh, administration and I am a little bit disappointed with that and saddened but hopefully things will get better and um, you know I feel like the policies towards immigrants are clear that he's trying to encourage legal immigration and legalizing people who are here for a long time and don't have anything bad you know like they're not criminals and so on but the actual work to legalize them you know, Trump was signing executive orders left and right. Biden is not doing any of that. Biden is waiting for Congress to act. Biden is sticking with the low refugee admissions cap. Biden is continuing to build the wall. The delays are still bad and I don't see them improving. So we'll wait and see, but so far it's like a 50-50 thing. Stick with us for more immigration news. As time goes on, more and more interesting things and developments will happen. And I will be here to comment and discuss them with you. Stay tuned.